Good morning, and thank you for tuning in to the Andrew Tate Show, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. We've got a great show for you guys today. Uh, we're going to be covering Deion Sanders um, saying his son, uh, you know, I learned how to pronounce this, and then I forgot. Can you enlighten Shador, me? Shadora? Shadora. Shadora. Okay. Said, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. I, was, I, was, I was like, I don't know where she's going right now, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I have no clue what she's talking about. Then I realized. Yeah. Shador. Saying his son Shador probably would have been second quarterback pick if he entered the NFL draft. We're also going to be talking about ESPN uh, making some deals for the new streaming service. And then, as always, since it's Friday, we have our special on dating horror stories. Before we start, though, I would like to ask you guys like and follow the show also we get a number of questions from viewers that come in during the show so to ensure that your question gets read on the air i ask that you use the tips and donation link with your question that tips and donation link is gsmcpodcast.net this puts your question at the top of the list so that i can see it and it also just really helps the show apologies sorry (laughs) i thought that's what it was I really did think that's what it was, but I didn't want to mess it up. So all of a sudden, you just kind of pause, and I'm like, "Okay, I don't know what's going on." <laughs> How are you doing today, Miss Faith? I'm good. It's Friday. I'm so glad that it's Friday. <laughs> it's an extra busy day for me because I immediately go from this show mm-hmm. to the GSMC College Football Podcast, so I'm actually yes. going to be doing that with Tommy. Yeah. Today. Yeah. Not the whole show. I'm only doing a couple of segments in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's going to be interesting. Mm-hmm. And then, oh, I got to share something with you. I still think this is super cool. Mm-hmm. And it's dumb, but it's cool to me. You sometimes, it only happens a few times a year, living, living in Southern Europe. Mm-hmm. So sometimes you, you look outside and the sky is all red and it's incredibly beautiful. Mm-hmm. But then sometimes you come out and like this morning I came out and all the cars are covered in red dust, <gasps> all of them. And when we first moved here, it was like, what is this stuff? Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> what it is is a sandstorm from the Sahara Desert throws up so much sand oh, wow. that it covers parts of Portugal and Spain. That's so crazy. Today, my car was completely covered with sand from the Sahara Desert. Huh. I think that's super cool. Yeah. <laughs> my car is filthy. But I'm yes. Saying, where I'm trying to remember, where is the Sahara located at? In Northern Africa. And it goes all the way to Europe? But wait a minute, though. You don't realize, see, people, Americans don't realize, this is not me attacking you or anything, how close Europe and and Africa are. I could get in my car, and five and a half hours from now, I can be in Morocco. Mm. Now, granted, there's a ferry that takes your car across, but... It, I'm only five and a half hours five and a half hours from Morocco, Africa. I have to look at I have to look at a map real quick. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm throwing a curveball at you there. You're like, wait a minute, let me look at a map. Yes. Oh yeah, I guess you're right. <laughs> Still, that's crazy though that it yeah. goes that it travels that far. So it's it is so cool to be like. My my car is filthy because there was a sandstorm in and you know Africa in the Sahara mm-hmm. Desert and I have Sahara Desert dirt yeah. on my car. That is crazy. Eventually, I'm sure at some point I'll be like all you know upset like living in California. <laughs> and the forest fires and the the ash drops on your car and you're like, oh, you know, not happy about that. Mm -hmm. I guess eventually I'll be like, ah, freaking Sahara Desert. But right now (laughs) it is kind of awesome to be like, my car's covered with dirt from the Sahara Desert. Yeah. That's weird, right? Yeah, we just get (laughs) pollen here. (laughs) (laughs) And then the fact that you had to look it up, like, wait a minute, where is it? Where? But yeah, yeah, 
Geography so, anyway, is important. <laughs> <laughs> Geography is important, ladies and gentlemen. Because yeah, oh, because you think about that and you're like, wait a minute, how? Wait, the Sahara Desert is like nowhere near you. Yes, yeah. it is. It's in my backyard. <laughs> yeah, kind of, kind of in your backyard. <laughs> yeah, like I said, five hours and you're in Morocco. Mm -hmm. Five, five and a half hours, depending on how you drive. If you drive like my German friends, it may be four and a half hours. <laughs> Girl, I that's the other thing. I am used to driving on highways in America. Mm -hmm. I'm the little old man that drives on the roads. Because first off, I'm used to kilometers. And so I'm doing 130 kilometers and I'm like, whoa, that's like fast. Yeah. But then you get in the car with your German friends and they're used to driving 200 kilometers an hour. And it's just like, what the heck? Which is like 150. Jeez that's just Louise, that, yeah. <laughs> 150 <laughs> miles per hour. And that's just like, oh, yeah, I drove the whole way doing 150. I don't think, think I've ever gone over like 85 miles. Exactly. <laughs> when you're compared to the Germans, we drive super slow. Like the yeah. fastest drivers drive slow. Mm -hmm. I don't understand. And they're comfortable with it. They're 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 drinking a, a soda. They're they're jamming to the tunes and just and I'm like, oh no. Yeah. I won't even ride with my I, I, my buddy Alex, <laughs> I don't even ride with him anymore because I'm too afraid. <laughs> anyway, let's get to the show. <laughs> All righty. So Dion Sanders says, son, uh, say it again for me. Shador. Shador. Okay. Shador probably would have been second quarterback pick if he'd entered the NFL draft. Colorado coach Dion Sanders says his son, quarterback Shador Sanders, probably would have been the second quarterback pick in next month in if, next month's NFL draft if he'd elected to leave school early rather than return to Colorado for his senior season. Whoa. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's Friday. You're supposed to be on your A game. <laughs> um he wouldn't have been the first quarterback off the board. I think he had the ability, but he probably would have been the second quarterback off the board, Sanders said Wednesday. USC quarterback Caleb Williams is projected by most draft uh, analysts to go first overall to the Chicago Bears. North Carolina quarterback Drake Mave, Heisman winner and LSU quarterback Jaden Daniels, national champion, and Michigan quarterback J.J. McCarthy are all expected to go early in this year's draft. Uh, the only reason that I know... Uh, don't you think I know people in the NFL? I'm sorry, I played for how many years? 14, got a gold jacket at the crib, I think. I think I know some people, Jerry Jones, Arthur Blank. I know some people in the game, Roger Goodell. So when I speak, I'm not just throwing stuff out of my head. I'm throwing stuff based on knowledge. So let's just get that straight, uh, Sanders commented. Um, so... Sanders, who started two seasons at Jackson State before following his father and transferring to Colorado after the 2022 season, threw for 3,260 uh, yards and 27 touchdowns with three interceptions. He completed uh, 298 of 430 of his passes for the Buffaloes, who finished 4-8 and eight despite winning their first three games. So, uh, do you agree? Do you agree with the statement that Deion Stan Sanders made about his son? Okay, I'm going to throw some caveats in here first. Mm. First off, I am a huge Deion Sanders fan. Mm -hmm. Huge Deion Sanders fan. Uh, even before he ever played for the Cowboys, I love Deion. Mm -hmm. um, so I've always followed Deion. And then uh, I followed him when he went to Jackson State, and I watched Jackson State, and I have been a huge fan and follower of Colorado uh, and there and Dion and his sons mm -hmm. there. So I've watched all of this from the top. Um, the first statement I say in my head is this. What Dion is talking about saying that, you know, he knows a lot of people in the NFL in the NFL. Mm -hmm. So he's getting a lot of inside information and they're telling him that he would be, his son would probably be the second quarterback taken. Mm -hmm. 
my first question is, you know, are they telling them that because it's a son and they're trying to be nice? Right. Um, because my question is this, or my statement is this, if Shador is going, it would be the second t- the quarterback taken in the NFL draft that make him the number two pick. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Then I think Dion should have told his son to turn pro this mm. year. Uh, you know, I'm sorry. It, I feel like it's a disservice to have him come back to college if he's going to be the second pick. Mm-hmm. Uh, you definitely 100% put him in the draft. Mm-hmm. Now, your question is, do I believe this? When Dion was at Jackson, Shador was at Jackson, I'm like, of course, he's lighting, he's lighting these dudes up because they're, you know, they're, they're, they're at Jackson State and they're playing mm-hmm. other historically black colleges and the quality of play is not the same. And so I always took that, that approach like, yeah, he's, he's doing it with, against inferior competition. And then he transferred to Colorado. And I watched him against Nebraska and I watched him against TCU and USC and Oregon and all these other top flight programs. And he can spin it. Mm -hmm. He is a quality quarterback. I don't know if he's the second quarterback taken, but he's a quarterback that goes in the first round. Mm -hmm. He's one, he's one of the four best quarterbacks in the NFL. Mm -hmm. Sorry, sorry. In the NFL draft. I'm not going to say in the NFL. That's a, that's a whole nother conversation, (laughs) but he is definitely one of the four best quarterbacks in, in the draft. And there could be as many as six quarterbacks taken in the first round. Mm -hmm. So when you look at that, then I agree with Dion. What Dion is saying, um, I don't have the same context that he has, but from what I've seen, yes, he can. Um, now, going back to what I said, as far as if he if he's getting word that he would have been a second quarterback taken, you you put him in the draft. But if it's something that you're not sure, with so many quarterbacks in this draft. It is very easy to slide. Mm. So waiting another year and having him come back next ne- in next year's draft moves him up the up the ladder, and he's going to be either the first or second quarterback taken off the the board this year. I think he's he's going he's going to be a top quarterback, unless something crazy happens. He has Mm -hmm. plenty. Colorado's going to be a much better team this year. He's going to have a a better offensive line. He's going to, I mean, Colorado has receivers on top of receivers with a side order receivers. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of weapons he's going to have. I see Shador having an incredible year this year and contending for the Heisman Trophy. Mm -hmm. This is... Now, Shador is is, is maybe this doesn't apply to him as much, but this is a great example. The top two highest paid players for name, image, and likeness is Cooper Manning, Peyton Manning's nephew. Grandfather is Arch Manning, one of the greatest to ever do it. Other uncle is Eli Manning future Hall of Famer, Peyton Manning Hall of Famer, mm-hmm. and Shador Sanders. Those are the two guys that make the absolute most money in name, image, and likeness. Yeah. The fact is, talking about name, image, and likeness, normally the fact that Arch Manning is not really, he didn't transfer out of Texas and is going to, for the second year, he's going to be a backup because there's no real rush, because there's not that money, you know, the lure of, I have to go to the NFL to get the money to get paid to take care of my family, isn't there. So Arch Manning did not transfer or go to another school where he could turn pro right away. 
mm-hmm. or Shador, who's like, they're saying, I'm the second quarterback taken in a draft, or I'm going to be a first round pick. If you are the normal average quarterback in the, in, a, uh, in college, before name, image, and likeness, you got no money and you were just a poor kid who played football well, you would go to the NFL way before his time. Mm -hmm. This is an example of two quarterbacks that are making incredible money playing college football, and they're not rushing to get to the NFL before their time. Mm -hmm. So I know I'm saying it both ways, but this is an example of how name, image, and likeness, and, and like I said, the Mannings and Deion Sanders, they're loaded. They're wealthy beyond, yeah. you know, belief. But there's a lot of kids that are in college because name, image, and likeness, they don't have to rush and and force themselves to go to the NFL before they're ready. Mm-hmm. This is just two examples of how you can take your time and turn pro at the right time. And we did a story a while back where not as many players were declaring for the NFL mm-hmm. draft this year. That's because before it would be like, listen, I know I can make the practice squad on somebody, so yeah. I'm going. Mm-hmm. Or I I know I'll be a, a six round pick. I'm going because that means a few hundred thousand dollars, which is more money than I've ever had in my life. Mm-hmm. Now these guys are waiting and I can play two more years instead of being a six rounder. I'm a first rounder or a second round player mm-hmm. not being forced to turn pro before it's time. Mm-hmm. That's what I get out of this story most of all is the fact that the, Shador doesn't have to turn pro. Mm-hmm. He can make his money in the NFL and turn pro when he's ready mm-hmm. part of me is like man if you're gonna be the second player pick you should go now mm-hmm. but also there's another part of me that's like you don't have to turn pro until you're ready to turn pro mm-hmm. nowadays that's what name image and likeness has done for college football and it's a good thing mm-hmm. that's what i was gonna leave it on so you feel that it's smart that he's not going into the draft this year? I don't year? know. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little twisted on this one because of the fact that if he's literally being told he would be the second quarterback taken, mm-hmm. I feel like you have to go turn pro. Well, maybe he but... wants to graduate college. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Here is... I don't want to make it... I'm not making accusations, but... A lot of the kids nowadays aren't even on campus. They're doing all, you know, their classes all online. Mm. They're not they're not really there. And if you're doing your classes online, you can turn pro and still get your degree. And so, okay. You understand yeah. what I mean? So mm-hmm. that's that's two totally different conversations. Mm-hmm. The conversation for me is maybe Dion, who knows the NFL, is like, listen, he, you're not, even though you could be the second pick in the draft, I want my son going when he's ready. Mm-hmm. And we, with Dion's bank and with Shador's and how much he's getting, they don't have to do that anymore. Mm-hmm. And a lot of players will not have to be forced to turn pro because of projections. Mm-hmm. But whenever their camp, and now when I say camp, I mean them, their agent, uh, mm-hmm. the scouts, and the family are like, you're ready to go. Now you're ready to like, and I, I think it's going to, name, image, and likeness is going to help a lot of poor kids get out of a bad situation. And I think it's going to improve overall quality of NFL play because there's going to be a lot more players turning pro that are going to be much more uh, have been uh, are more adapted to playing mm-hmm. at that level, not turning pro because, hey, I just need the money. 
Right. And if I could just make the practice squad or if I could be a six round pick, at least I've made the league and I've made some money. I'm making a little bit of money. Mm -hmm. That's going to go away. Or it is all, matter of fact, it is already starting to go away because if you're a six round pick and you're like, I could stay another year and maybe I'm a third round pick, or maybe I can stay another two more years. Mm -hmm. uh, that is happening because name, image, and likeness is doing this for the players. Mm -hmm. People are very upset about name, image, and likeness sometimes, but it's doing some good. There's gonna be, there's, there's kids that maybe, hey, I'm not really going to be an NFL player, but I can mm -hmm. play college long enough that I can take care of myself and my family and set us up and give us a new leash on life. Mm -hmm. I'm a big, I twisted this all into a name, image, and likeness conversation. And if I look at it as a good thing. Well, also, so. like, even, even the people who will probably go to the NFL, I feel like it makes them more ready for that as well too they're not rushed into going into the nfl draft as well so yes like this year there are a lot of really good quarterbacks mm -hmm. and so there was one of them and but now there are some quarterbacks that like you look at this draft and it's like man there's there's too many quarterbacks in this draft mm -hmm. It, it doesn't have to be a financial decision. Well, even though there's like seven quarterbacks that may go ahead of me, mm -hmm. I'm still going to turn pro because I'll be a fourth round pick. Mm -hmm. Now they can come back because they're making a half million, a million dollars a year. And they're like, okay, I'm not going in this draft because mm -hmm. I, one, I could slide one. I need a little bit more polishing. Mm -hmm. So I might as well get polished in, the, in, in in college, start, and then turn pro. And it's not like, hey, I'm eating uh, Top Ramen and Kraft Macaroni and Cheese yeah. in my college dorm anymore. It's that, those days are gone. Those guys are making 100. 200 500 a million dollars a year to play college and they don't have to rush and leave mm -hmm. and so that's why it's a good thing mm -hmm. so all righty well we're gonna take our a quick break guys and when we come back we're gonna be talking about uh espn and how they are open for business so make sure you guys <laughs> <laughs> stick around 